Evening, the news gang is here, so are the floods. Wasn't there a drought just the other day? But don't worry, be happy, the government is building some dams. Also tonight, the shiny debt express from the airport straight to Westlands. Who's getting on board? We'll also look at the BBI and maybe why. Plus, permission to borrow. Which loan is next? Also on the show, the kicker, the punchline, the memo, the take and the angle. But tonight we'll also have a special appearance on News Gang by engineer Peter Mundinia. He's the Director General of the Kenyan National Highways Authority to answer all those questions about the expressway, JKI expressway and the other projects around this country. Ladies and gentlemen, um, let's get this started very quickly. Uh, the floods are moving too fast, so we'll not even spend a lot of time on them, but we'll start with you, Gashuri. What's your take? I, I'm not surprised that we have floods, and uh, I will also not be surprised soon when we have drought, because this is an annual ritual. The only tragedy is that every time it happens, we act surprised, like, guy, the floods are here. Even next year, same. But away from it, it is a tragedy because 29 people dead so far, it is tragic. No life should be lost on something that can be predicted and planned for. All right. Yvonne? Um, I think it's just, I'm, I'm wondering when we are going to be building those dams and when we're learning the lessons. You remember the story that uh, uh, Sam Gituka did yesterday and he highlighted all the number of times that we've heard uh, from uh, Cabinet Secretary Omalwa and, and the script is exactly the same. We're building dams and we're building water pans. Uh, and I believe uh, Cabinet Secretary Kiyunjuri also said the same thing, that they were 31, building 31, 31 dams. dams ahead of the floods. Here we are. Um, also, just a point to note, uh, the government spokesperson today said, Sarah Soguna said, uh, you know, the same thing. And it was very general that we're providing uh, a long-term support. And, and, you know, we're asking people to move to areas that are much higher. A lot of support needs to be given to these people. You tell me to move from my home to higher ground. Where is that? Where is that support? Uh, but I've also just heard a lot of generalities. Nothing specific out of those 31. How many dams have been built? How much water catchment have we done? Um, it's generalities and I'm afraid uh, that it'll be the same, uh, you know, during the next season. And uh, it's picking up on, on what the spokesman said today about um, 29 people dying and mm -hmm. about 11,700 having been displaced and 10,000 livestock having been swept away. He talked about aid, that they're taking food and non-food items to those who are affected. Something he said, though, uh, has been ringing in my head the whole day. The most affected areas are Wajir, Masabit, Mandera, far-flung areas. And he said they'll have uh, trucks uh, carry the, the food and the non-food uh, items all the way to, I think, somewhere in Isiolo. And then they'll have a chopper carry it all the way to Wajir, saying that it will cost more if the Negi baby to Kahapa all the way there. But for me, this is a dire situation. People need these things yesterday. So if you say to save course, you're going to start uh, with a truck first all the way to a town, Katikati, Indom, to me and they need it night now and I don't think we need to worry about how much it will cost us for now we just need to make sure we get this food and the and the and the non uh, food stuff to the people who are currently suffering the images we've been seeing have been uh, devastating and very sad and again what Gashuri said a few months down the line all that water and it will be right back where we started to when your droughts and then the cycle continues again and again every single year it's tiring Joe yeah, I think um it's sad to see the rainwater going to waste uh, because this is water that can be put into great use. There is a number of ways that uh, that could be done. I mean, uh, Yvonne alluded to the, uh, the yet-to-be-constructed dams. But also, when you look at countries that we like citing as potential uh, examples we would like to be, like Singapore, they have walked the journey of rainwater harvesting and they have done it so successfully uh, by creating canals, systems of canals that are about 8,000 kilometers in terms of uh, uh, the length, just so that you reduce the flood prone, uh, uh, flooding in, in the flood prone areas. Uh, I know the government has over the years done a very good job when it comes to uh, Budalangi. Uh, the dikes have been up and we don't see as much damage in Budalangi as we used to. It is a story that needs to be repeated elsewhere, but with particular focus to 
saving this water for some use, mm -hmm. agricultural, drinking, animals, and all that. And talking of animals, I think pastoralists are happy with the ongoing raining season because uh, this will mean that for the next few months, they'll be pasture secure, maybe even up to five, six months. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah, but, but, but what, what I think is at the end of the day, I mean, as a student of uh, climate change, I know this is something that um, concerns many people around the world. There are things that have changed. I mean, people who even don't know something called climate change can tell that mm -hmm. there is something that has changed in the mm -hmm. patterns and uh, when the rains would come, and, uh, what impacts they would have, how much rain, the succession of floods and, 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 and drought and that sort of thing. And so what um, most experts are talking about is what they call in, in, increasing the adaptive capacity of the communities. That is to say that each community being able to, because right now we're talking about an, an emergency, but that's not even the most serious thing. It's unfortunate that people uh, have died. But at the end of the day, the floods will go away. There are people who already had planted mm -hmm. the crops mm -hmm. that uh, have been swept away. Yeah. What happens to people like those ones? How do they pick up from where the floods left, left off? And after that, after a few months down the road, there will be drought that will have implications. What kind of crops are they growing in those places where droughts are now more frequent than they used to be? So it's those kinds of long-term views of this because climate change from every prediction that you hear about is going to be more rather than less in, in the coming days. And therefore, this is probably going to be what our lives are. So there is the, all the things that people are doing to, to deal with what's causing climate change. But in this part of the world, what is most critical is how do we cope with, 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 with the impact. Mm -hmm. And I think that this would be a good, thing, a good place to bring Engineer uh, Mundinia. Uh, you have had all conversations going on around the country uh, since the president um, uh, did the groundbreaking for the expressway, what's the most shocking thing that you had, or you've had people say about this project that made you feel like, are they still talking about the same project I'm working on? Uh, thank you so much for uh, inviting me here. And I'm happy because um, very many things have been talked about uh, this project. Uh, I've seen it in the social media whereby they're saying that uh, this project is not economically viable and yet it's, we are still going on with it. So, uh, and I think it's important that then we put a uh, record slate and the way to do it is to actually tell the public what uh, we are doing and the benefits that actually comes with it. Uh, because we're saying that um, beside the economic returns that we get, it is also going to make sure that at least the congestion within Nairobi is reduced. Uh, we expect that uh, these 27 kilometers of road, which is actually starting from Mororongo all the way to James Gishuru, 27 kilometers, uh, passing through the CBD, is going to actually reduce the congestion. And the way it is going to do that is that um, we expect it to take about 30% of the available uh, traffic now. The traffic today is about 77,000 uh, vehicles per day. So uh, about 30% is going to be taken up. Uh, what we're doing, as, uh, even as you do this expressway, is to understand that expressway alone cannot be able to solve the problems of traffic. Uh, we have planned on the, same on the same corridor the bus rapid transit system so that as, um, uh, uh, as the, 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 the expressway take about 30%, we can also get another 30% being taken up by BRT as we move, 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 move on. That we then, we are going to ensure that uh, all the congestions that we have experienced within the city is reduced. And that, of course, brings about um, uh, times that are spent uh, between the airport, say, to town, or even going beyond, which is uh, between uh, one hour to one and a half, sometimes even two. Can, that can be reduced to less than a half an hour. Engineer, just help us visualize what you're describing. Where does this expressway start and where does it end? Are there stopovers in the way? Are there other roads going to join it? Or it's one expressway, as the name says, from JKIA to Westlands? Let's yeah. paint a picture. Uh, thank you so much. I think uh, it's good to say that um, the expressway is actually not even starting at JKIA because we realize that uh, there's a lot of congestion with, even within Murorongo. So it is actually going back to Murorongo 
and the first uh, interchange will be at Mororongo. Then uh, it, will, it will go all the way through town, uh, through uh, Uhuru Highway, up to James Kishoro. As you can see from James Kishoro moving forward, we, doing, we have a project that is going on. And um, uh, Kenya Urban Also Authority also have done a link road. But at that junction, there's a lot of problem. So uh, this project is meant to actually deal with all those electronics that we have within that corridor to ensure that at least vehicles that are using uh, for coming from other, other, other links can be able to get into the uh, highway and be able to move. We have 10 interchanges. And those 10 interchanges are the ones that are going to assist to, uh, to enter in into the, and I can name them. Yeah, please do. Yeah, we have the, the one at Murorongo. We have another one at SGR Tanoff. And very important why we should have that. Because SGR is a source of a lot of traffic. Uh, equally, there's meter gauge around there. So it's important to do that. Then we have another one. At Where is the SGR tunnel exactly? The turn off. The turn off. Oh, the turn off to the SGR. Yeah. To turn off to the station. Yeah. Yeah. At Siokimau? Siokimau. 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 Yes. Siokimau. Okay. Mm. Then we have uh, the third one being a JKA. Uh, the other one is at Eastern Bypass. As you know, Eastern Bypass has always had problems mm. and therefore uh, coming up with this interchange then is going to sort out that problem. Uh, we have another one at Sound and Bypass. Uh, Sereni. Or Sereni. Yeah. We have another one at Capital Center, uh, just to make sure that South C and South B can be able to move without any issue, people coming from either side. Uh, the one that is going to serve the central business district is at Hells Rassia. Then we have another one at uh, Museum Hill, then at Westrads, and finally at James Kishore. They are 10. Mm -hmm. uh, we deliberately did not put a lot of uh, interchanges within town, because if we did that, then we are going to congest the town yes. instead of solving the problem that uh, you are required to solve. So you only have that one, and the other one is at, um, uh, at Museum Hill. Now, the question you're asking, how does it assist? Uh, if, you, if you look at the congestion we encounter in the thicker road, and now we have interchanges, uh, one at Yasirasi and another one at um, James Kichuru, uh, not James Kichuru, but uh, uh, Museum Hill. Then we'd expect that vehicles that actually congest the whole highway between uh, Museum Hill uh, to Nyao Stadium, Nyao, Nyao House, or up to Yasirasi, then mm -hmm. they can be able to move. Because the one that are moving directly to the airport or move from the airport can go up. And again, if you are turning to uh, up, uh, uh, upper hill, you actually can lift up, you can, you can be up and then get to the other side. So it's going to actually reduce significantly. We expect about 30% of reduction of congestion. Uh, engineer, uh, it, it's, it's all well and good that it's going to reduce uh, congestion on the roads. This project is going to cost over 100 billion. And with time it's handed over to Kenya, I think it will be in the year 2049. That's one of the issues. But the other one I want to talk about is the levy that is going to be, uh, motorists will have to pay. Mm -hmm. I think Ken had conducted a survey before uh, this project mm -hmm. was, was launched and discovered that uh, over 39% of people did not want to pay a levy. And the other almost 40 something percent were saying they'll not pay more than 50 shillings. But according to a report, it shows that people will pay about 155 shillings once they cross that mm -hmm. expressway from uh, JK all the way to, to, to Westlands. Do you think this will go down well uh, with, with Kenyans? Because the fact that you're making them really pay mm -hmm. along the way to get to where they're going. And will that be sort of make you kind of recover mm -hmm. uh, what, what, what will have been spent in this project, considering about what 50,000 vehicles will be, sp will be using that ro road in a uh, day? Initially, they we are talking about 25,000 okay. vehicles that are going to go into the into mm -hmm. the expressway. Uh, let me correct the position there that um, the amount of money that is going to be expended is 59.9, not 100 million okay. billion. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, let me say that um, uh, the amount that actually will be uh, used or will be charged is again is that standard that was done by World Bank. Mm -hmm. And we are all involved in terms, and the other stakeholders were involved, in terms of trying to find out what is this rate that people are willing to pay. Okay. We had two questions. The first question was, uh, would you be comfortable to pay something as long as provision of service is provided? The answer, everybody was 100% yes. Mm -hmm. But then the second question was how much? And as you say, uh, what was coming out more or less was like six shillings per, per mm -hmm. kilometer. Okay. But then when you now talk of uh, uh, 
the fact that you must consider the, the whole idea of um, uh, consumer uh, uh, index, you know, the fact that things keep on changing. Uh, it is the reason why it is expected that by the time they are coming to 2021 or 2022, then, of course, the six shillings will no longer be six, it will mm -hmm. be slightly higher. Uh -huh. And therefore, the rate that we are talking about now. Okay. Um, I'd like to ask a question, and this uh, is something that has been posed by an architect known as Professor Alfred Omenia. Uh, he says, by 2050, CRBC projects that the daily passenger numbers from JKIA will be 54,000. By the same time, the day population needing to move in Nairobi will be 14 million. Uh, and therefore, the expressway will be serving a mere 0.38% of the Nairobi population. He asks, is that an equitable use mm -hmm. of public resources? Uh, thank you so much. I was not able to actually watch um, uh, uh, Professor, mm -hmm. but I saw some remarks as, that he has made, and yeah. I think they make a lot of sense. Because what he is saying is that um, whatever we're doing, it has to be environmentally friendly. Again, the, the public good that we are actually transferring to a private sector should also be transferred in a manner that is, has a lot of benefit to the, to the public and not to the individual that we are transferring the, the service to. In this case, we are saying that uh, the 14 million he's talking about is the entire Nairobi. Mm -hmm. He should actually base his argument on the people that he expect or he project to actually be on that line. And it says about 54,000. Yeah, starting from where we, we, we are, we are yeah. talking about that it can be able to pick 25, uh -huh. which will now go up up 54 on that line. And uh, the idea, you know, what we expect is that um, even as it's speaking 54, that would be a, about that of, what, of the traffic that is expected there. So then it means that that road reserve as it is now, and without necessarily having to actually uh, bring down any uh, development that is on the side, then we must effectively utilize it. And that's why I mentioned from the beginning that beside doing this expressway, government uh, ourselves can have, because that is our line one. If you, if you have had BRT line one, that is one of it. Mm -hmm. And therefore, even as we do this expressway, we are coming along with BRT to ensure that another 30% can also be picked up. And therefore, we leave very really little over the other traffic on the, on the, uh, to actually utilize the road. Engineer, let, let's talk about Uhuru Park. Because that's also another issue that has triggered a lot of contention. One, will this expressway in any way <coughs> affect Uhuru Park? And number two, if it will, let me read a tweet by a gentleman called Ashikoi. He's asking, now that the JKA expressway has brought lots of euro because of cutting through Uhuru Park, why can't the design be modified to include underground tunnel at Uhuru Park? Uh, thank you very much. Let me say one thing that... Um, when I was talking about 27 kilometers, uh, 11 of them will be lifted up. And the reason why you're lifting up is because of the congestion. There are two ways of doing it. You can actually take it down or lift it up. Uh, at the whole park, uh, we are saying we are not going to acquire any land. From the preliminary design we have done, and now that uh, we launched the project, <coughs> we expect detailed design to be done. Uh, if you use a whole highway, you realize there's a drain which is inside here. It's normally called uh, Nairobi anti-malaria drain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Our road reserve is all the way inside there, and we don't expect that we are going to go beyond that drain. And therefore, we are not going to touch a whole park. In fact, what we have uh, been doing and working with the county is to see to it that um, uh, the, the entire road, as we, as we beautify the entire road when it's finally done uh, for environmental issues, we also actually do a lot on the whole park, so that the whole park then can also be a place of uh, choice when people are in Nairobi. You're um, saying that some of the that some of the bits will be lifted up, the others will not. So where will these yeah. ones pass? And w are there buildings that will be affected? Mm -hmm. Is there land that you have to acquire from anyone along the way in terms of compensation? Uh, let me say this: uh, from uh, uh, Mororongo all the way up to Capital Centre. The road reserve as it exists is, is quite uh, big. And even at the middle, we have enough, uh, if we have enough reserve to actually put the expressway. So the contractor will not have any issue. We will actually just start working on the, on the median side and can be able to work up to capital center without necessarily having to affect the traffic as it exists today.
But now from capital center the road the road width is reduced, the road reserve is reduced. And therefore you cannot have it on the ground. So you're going we're going to do a bridge which is going to be eleven kilometers from capital center to James Kishoro. Uh, just before we reach James Kishoro, uh, we are going to make it to take it down so that again we can be able to ensure that that roundabout is functioning very well. If you know the the um, uh, the, the roundabout that is at Gariria, more or less is going to be the same. So that at least the vehicles that are passing through can go at the other, but the others can uh, be able to right. be on the ground. And there's a but question here, how much of a rural park are you actually yeah. going you are not to speaking. do? You're not picking. Yeah, is, that, is that what that you're is, saying that, that here tonight? Correct, that because you we, are not touching a rural park Because our reserve yeah. reaches up to, uh, the, you, know, you know people, the way, when, when people look at um, uh, the whole highway, they stop at where our work is all. But uh, be, and the be, park begins uh, be, mm. uh, be, before. Be, no, no, no. Yeah, that's 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 that's, that's, yeah. that's the impression. But uh, if you look beyond the fence, you will see the anti-malaria drain I'm talking about moving from uh, mm -hmm. the uh, university. Which way fence? Down. The Horo Park fence. Yeah, there's a there's a hedge. You see, you mm -hmm. see, you see, you see a drain there. It's a tunnel. Uh, yeah, that drain. And an engineer just just to uh, so that you you stay on that point earlier. The government spokesperson. <coughs> Uh, Colonel Laguna said that the area that will be affected is 23 meters into the park. No, not be, not beyond the drain. Okay. It's, it's before you reach the drain. It's true. It's 23 meters. But you get what, right yeah. now, yeah. any Kenyan who will see that will see that what we call Huru Park right now, because there's a fence there and then there are other things in there, mm. you will move inside beyond mm. that fence. Uh, let me, you know, what, what is happening is that um, that drain actually is constructed to actually take care of the water of the drain, of the, of the, of the road, as well as in the Uhuru Highway and the, also the other roads that actually joins the Uhuru Highway. So it has always been part of our, our investment. It is part of our road. But in physical terms, engineer, mm. Mm. A, a, a normal naked eye of a Kenyan will actually notice that there'll be activity Right. On what they consider to be part I of the would, park today, I, I, I imagine yeah, twenty-three that, 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 meters. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, okay. for, for a straight, yeah. for a length of about three hundred meters um, mm, he, from he, the junction of Hellsrazi. All right. Okay. Uh, mm. So we understand uh, that the company uh, building this they have a concession agreement where they'll be allowed to uh, run this road. Uh, up until what 2049? 2049. That's when they hand over to Kenya. Yes, mm -hmm. and and we understand that there is some sort of non-compete clause that means that the government cannot engage in any other projects that would essentially compete with this. So, uh, is that true? If it is, what does that mean? Can you then not carry on with BRT or any other that you have uh, so clearly here said will be all part of, um, you know, decongesting the city? Mm, it it is not true uh, because one. We have mentioned about BRT, which which competes with them in terms of uh, moving traffic. Uh, the second thing is that um, in the ministry we are also doing the commuter rail, which is also competing with it, and it is going to be done. So, and that is not part of what uh, is signed that they can't allow. What we are saying, well, well, normally what this kind of agreement have is that um, it is not expected that you can actually provide another person to do a parallel road alongside that. And if you are to, if, if for any reason uh, the traffic increases uh, significantly, the first person of choice is the person who is there. And if he fails to actually take up the, the challenge that we have given him, then that is the time we can go to the other person. Engineer, I'll have to ask you this, and uh, uh, it's a quick one. Someone on Twitter called Infrastructure said, um, why not construct a light rail transit on the median lane, which is the most viable and cost effective? Developed countries are doing away with elevated highways. Yeah, well, you know, they, they, that, that's a good comment. But uh, all the same, as I've mentioned, the commuter is, is also being done. There's a reserve for it, and there's a reserve for the road. So there, there's nothing now that uh, would have uh, prevented uh, Kenya Railways to continue with the reserve that they do have. If they didn't have, possibly that is another thing that can be, can, can be looked into. Mm -hmm. But now they have their reserve, we have our reserve, and therefore, and there no, there's no competition in that. We are all complementing one another in terms of uh, public <coughs> transportation. Mm -hmm. uh, engineer, let me, let me ask you a, a double-header question from a gentleman called Kevin J here. He's saying, please ask the engineer which is cheaper and efficient between tram trains and the express highway, and is the project done to please UNEP? And a second one here by a gentleman called Daniel Ouma. 
the elephant in the room, why an express way and not an MRT system like light rail sky train? Better to move 100,000 people than 1,000 vehicles. Well, uh, all, these, all these are options for transportation. And uh, what we need to look at is um, the, 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 the available resources to do what we want to do. For example, when you think of uh, the right rail, or when you think about uh, the, the tram, the, 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 the initial cost is very high. As we speak, uh, the government has been wanting to do this road since 1997. And at some stage, if you recall, there was uh, Nairobi motorway which had come into, put into place, although it never materialized. Mm -hmm. So there has been need to actually congest Nairobi and more so Ohuru Highway. And one of the attempts that uh, we made and significantly reduced, especially the high, um, high commercial vehicles, is to do the Southern Bypass. But even with that Southern Bypass, still uh, the road is still congested. And therefore, mm -hmm. there was need to do that. Oh. Their, their point is right, that yeah. okay, uh, these are also things that can be looked into. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. But we also can uh, imagine, you know, we are talking about uh, m moving now people from, uh, say, uh, areas like the airport, areas like SDL, yeah. to the city, and beyond. Okay, oh. thank you very much uh, yes, yeah. for coming here on the show. I mean, you know, we could have a show with you for two or three hours. <laughs> uh, thanks for coming in and answering our questions and those of our viewers. Uh, that's Engineer Peter Mundinia. He's the Director General of the Kenya National Highways Authority, speaking to us and answering those questions on that JKIA Expressway, saying it does not touch Uhuru Park. We'll wait and see. Thank you so much. Uh, for sure, time will tell. Thank you. You're watching News Gang. We want to take a short break. When we come back, we have lots more to discuss. We want to take a look at the state of the economy. And we want to talk about uh, BBI, right? Absolutely. Yeah, okay. So we'll be right back. You're watching News Gang. The hashtag is News Gang. Keep talking to us.